Is this the most iconic moment in American sports history? It's got to be right up there, right? Moments, iconic comes in a lot of different sizes, shapes, forms, and colors, right? So there are a lot of different ways that things can be iconic. In its own way, for something that was just purely a sports victory, meaning Jackie Robinson setting foot on a field in 1947 is different. Um, Billie Jean King taking the court against Bobby Riggs is different. They're, they're, they're iconic for different reasons. For a game to act, for the game and the outcome of the game to be as monumental and consequential as this one was, if we're taking just that into account, then this probably is number one. I have Miracle on Ace as the, as the third most meaningful sporting event of all time behind only Jackie Robinson breaking the color bar barrier and Jesse Owens winning gold in Germany. But that, was, of course, was not even on American soil. So I think in terms of, in terms of that, it's hard to compare anything to, to those things. But the way that you put it, I think, is the appropriate way to put it. Just in terms of a sporting event, the outcome of a sporting event, and how much that meant, I, I think it would be hard for me to imagine anything ever topping the miracle on ice. You know, the, the things in recent memory, like when Tiger Woods won the Masters in 2019, when we had long since given up, most people, not me, but many people, most people, had given up on the idea that he would ever win anything of consequence again, and then he won the Masters and lifted his son into his arms uh, in triumph on the 18th green, just as he had done with his own father a generation before. That's an iconic moment. The vision of Mike Tyson crawling around on a canvas in Tokyo trying to find his mouthpiece while Buster Douglas, of all people, stood over him, that's an iconic moment. These are things that, that are iconic because of the games themselves, of, of them being played and how they... How they um, impacted sports history. For those who aren't aware, 44 years ago, things in the U.S. were in a really complex place, not in the way they are today. We felt much more like one country then. Um, but that was at a time when these hostages were being held in Iran, and that was a, a, a time of real... There were We were in desperate need of a patriotic... Um, moment or something to sort of bind us all together so somewhat reminiscent I, I think now of when Mike Piazza hit a home run in the first game back in after September 11th um, some of those events in New York City if, if you were in this area of course hit so hard on 9-11 the running of the marathon about six weeks later was one of the great triumphs that we've ever seen, but it's 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 that's that's not the same kind of thing as this. No, I think I think that the miracle on ice probably in its own way stands alone. It stands at number one, and so I've always rooted for him. Then he gets drafted by the Bears, which is my sort of adopted second team based on my family and everything else, and I have watched them systematically destroy his career. What they did to him was no more destructive than what the Jets did to Sam Darnold than what the Giants did to Daniel Jones, than what the, um, who else has been a big bust of like the Patriots did to Mac Jones? None of that. And you know who persevered? Justin. He said the right things always. He kept fighting always. He kept leading always. And considering all the circumstances, he played pretty damn well. He didn't set the world on fire, but he played pretty well. So I am 100% of the opinion that he has a chance to be an excellent player. The fact that what happened in Chicago at the beginning of his career has not destroyed him will only make him stronger. And thus, as he now handles this brilliantly, not demanding me be out, get rid of me, I'm done with you, screw you all in Chicago. No, no, no. He unfollows them, so the message is sent. And he maintains the plausible deniability. Oh, why do people make such a big deal about social media anyway? Hilarious. Hilarious. Even I, 56 years old, know that it is an intentional act to unfollow someone or something on social media. And you don't do it without a reason. So I think this has been masterfully handled by Justin Fields. I think by the end of next week, by a week from tomorrow, Friday at the Combine, he will have been traded 
Pittsburgh, Atlanta, and there are always surprises. You never know. Someone we don't expect might pop in. But that's the way this is going to go. It's the best thing for him. At this point, it is also the best thing for the Bears. It could wind up being the kind of trade that winds up working out very well for both sides. So that's where it begins today. Mr. Hembo, what do you think? I have a question for you. My question is this. Which team had the fourth pick in 2021, the year Justin Fields was drafted, after quarterbacks went one, two, and three? Yeah, Atlanta. And they took Kyle Pitt. Right. Their GM, Terry Fontenot, was the GM at the time. That was the first draft under Terry Fontenot. My next question for you is this. Who was the head coach of that Falcons team? Arthur Smith. Where is, who he is now the offensive coordinator of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. So these are the two teams that we have primarily linked Justin Fields to. In other words, if one of those two teams is going to trade for him, someone is going to effectively admit that they were wrong at the time, which is sort of a bizarre place to be in, which is why I'm doing my best to see it from 30,000 feet and ask myself, there might be a, we'll call it a mystery team out there, because who knows? You know these people in the NFL aren't that good at changing their opinion. So you may remember that back in the early 20-teens, when it was frequently talked about that Bud was going to step away from that job, that we ran a campaign where I felt I should become the next commissioner of baseball. There was nothing jokey about it. Some may have perceived it as joking, but I was doing nothing of the kind. And so I would like to state now for the record to Rob and to Pat Courtney over there at Major League Baseball and everybody else, to every single baseball owner, I'm throwing my hat in the ring. I would like to be the next commissioner of baseball, and I will tell you why. I think I would do an outstanding job. I'm not kidding. I really think I would be a great commissioner. I think I have an understanding of a great many different elements of the business. I have a true love of the sport. I would represent the fans first and foremost, but with an understanding of the limitations that exist on that. I'll continue to make this case as we go, but I'm telling you right now, I want the gig. 